Hi, this is Matt Hendricks. Today I'll be leading you through an example of how to use DSIP router to be able to proxy requests through your FreePBX servers. So let's first go ahead and log in to DSIP router. And, and today I'm using uh, our newest release, which is 0.51. So let me go ahead and log in. And by the way, I'm using our demo system, so you can actually use our demo system as well. Um, and uh, the demo system gives you uh, a good way to being able to test out DSIP router uh, without having to go through the install. However, <laughs> the install is only like eight minutes, um, not even that, and, and uh, depending on what, how fast of a, of a virtual machine that you're using, uh, there's really like four or five commands that you run, and, and it actually uh, installs it um, for you. Um, so basically, you don't really have to do anything. You can click the install, or I'm sorry, now we click the install, you actually, uh, you know, drag and drop the actual commands. You can walk away, go get a coffee or, or a soda slash pop, and come back, and you should have a fully installed DSIP router. But in any regards, you can use the demo system as well. So let's go ahead and get, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. So uh, right now, I don't have any uh, PBXs uh, defined, so let's go ahead and define one. So I'm going to call this my free PBX system. I'm going to give it uh, the IP address of the FreePBX system that I'm using. And uh, none of these uh, other attributes care, uh, really matter. Um, in our case, we're going to use uh, uh, IP off. Um, which basically, all this really is going to do for us in this situation is just add the actual IP to the uh, to the address table of Camellio to allow communication between um, you know DSIP router slash Camellio to FreePBX. All right, so now we have a system. I'm going to do a reload here, uh, so that actually gets loaded into Camellio. Uh, now I'm actually going to go to a new feature called Domain. And what really domains allows you to do is to define a domain, and you can actually specify, um, you know, how you want to authenticate to that domain. We support, uh, you know, real time DB, which is really AKA asterisk real time database. The local subscriber table that means the local subscriber table within uh, Camellio. So um, you can actually put all your username and passwords there, and you will be uh, authenticating against that local table inside Camellio. And then from there, you can uh, then route off to uh, the PBX of choice, um, or you can use pass-through to PBX. And what pass-through to PBX kind of acts the same way as our Fusion um, domain support. So really what that means is that um, anybody who registers to aprilco.org, uh, or at least tries to register to aprilco.org, we're actually going to pass through the authentication or the register request uh, directly to the PBX. So, um, so one of the things I forgot to do here is actually get the uh, the PBX ID, right? So this is important. So this is how it knows how to route. So let's go back here, grab our PBX ID 81, go to domains, click add, and let's add it back here. Go pass through and 81. Okay. Okay, let's reload here as well. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, and register uh, a phone here. So let's go ahead and take this to the other screen. Okay. And let's call this aprilco.org. Uh, let's grab a username. Uh, so let's go 101. Okay. 
and password. And then our outbound proxy is going to be demo.dship.router.org. Right? And uh, that's it. And uh, cancel. And let's go ahead and attempt to register. Great. It registered. Let's, for the technical folks that are on the line, let's, uh, let's see what this actually looks like inside of DSIP Router. So I'm actually logged into the server. Um, really quickly, SNGREP is installed on every install of DSIP Server. Um, so let's go ahead and unregister and let's register. So, oops. Okay. So you can see that this looks very normal. Let me uh, go back out and let you see it again here. Okay. So what you're seeing is this is my soft phone. Uh, this is actually DSIP router. And this is the IP address of the PBX. So you can see a register request came through from my phone. It was passed through through DSIP router to actual free PBX. Obviously, it got unauthorized, and then we went to a register. Now with the proper nuts, um, and then we got an OK. Right. So, um, so basically, what's happening here is that um, you know you basically put a proxy on top of your free PBX uh, system. And the reason why you do that is because you may want to, um, you know, take your free PBX system down for maintenance. And if you do that, you may want, you want to obviously want the end user to continue to have service. So what you can do is actually bring up another free PBX server um, and uh, point decent router to that new PBX server. You could take the old one down um, do some maintenance on it, or maybe you're not doing maintenance. Maybe you're just upgrading to a faster, uh, you know, VM or something of that matter. Something, something like that. You're just upgrading. So what you can do is then point, you know, obviously DC router to another instance of of PPX, and the end user uh, will not know the difference. So having these layers um, in your in your architecture allows you a lot of flexibility. So that's what DCIP router is really allowing you to do, is really to be able to have flexibility on how you start building out your, your architecture. So um, we have just, uh, just to, to prove out what's going on here, and then we'll finish for the day, is that let's go to uh, Asics Info, let's go to Peers, and what you can see here is that 101 is registered uh, and uh, and it's using the IP address of the <clears throat> proxy is what you want, right? Because you don't want it to be sending it directly back to the host. So now, if we make a call, uh, it will be routing out of uh, routing from my actual cell phone uh, to DSIP router and then out of the PBX. Um, so thank you.